Hey YouTube, welcome to the We All Juggle Knives channel. Got another uh, stump top review for you. This is the Smith & Wesson Homeland Security buoy. Yes. Well, let's just take a look at this here. True full tang, G10 handle scales. <laughs> nice lamp, large lanyard hole. Basically impact surface there, extended tang. And you can see you know, it is a clip point buoy tip. The steel on this, 7CR17. I know, I know, boo. A lower priced uh, stainless. Look, it, it's a budget blade, I'm not going to lie. Oh, and excuse my hands, when I'm doing stuff out here, working, testing, I do not, you know, I don't guarantee that my hands won't be dirty. But that's dirt from work, yo, for you. <laughs> Alright, let's check, let's check out the sheath first. All right, there you go. All right, you see the straps there. Right. See the belt loop there. Secondary pocket. It does come with a little freebie sharpening stone. There's a plastic insert right there. It does fit. It does fit tightly, meaning you don't need the uh, retaining strap to hold it in. It'll hold it in by friction alone. All right, so that's cool. So that's the sheath that it comes with, you know, basically your basic nylon sheath with a plastic insert. Now this review is, it's going to be what I call a, a stab view, meaning, you know, this is kind of, uh, well not kind of, it is, it is sold as a weapon knife, okay, it's sold, it's branded by Smith & Wesson, but it's actually just an, it's, it's an import, okay, that's just, uh, you know, they put their name on an import, and I'm not going to baton with it because I just I don't I just don't think that this knife is meant for bushcraft. I don't think it's meant as a survivor man knife. I think it's you know just like Smith and Wesson firearms. It's meant for bad times, right? And that's what they're selling it as. So when I review a knife like this, I call it a stab view because well, let's not get too graphic here, but for obvious reasons, this is a TCB. TCB knife, taking care of business knife, sometimes called a social situations knife. We got a lot of euphemisms, so, sometimes called a zombie knife or anti-zombie for people that can't handle the reality that, you know, there are bad people in the world and they ain't zombies, they're people like you and me, but they mean you harm. All right, so let's assess this. Let's assess this knife as what, it, what it's intended for, right? Kind of a military knife last resort hand-to-hand -hand knife well it's a quarter inch thick I like that alright it's you know it's durable it is a heavy knife because of the full tang and the thick handle scales G10 it's actually one pound ten ounces which is heavy for this size of knife I mean a lot of knives of this size are a little under a pound alright so the stabby tip is working well. You know, flesh is nothing, n nowhere near as, uh, will not give you as much resistance as a uh, piece of wood, obviously. I like the buoy tip. I know what they're trying to do with this knife. Let me get my uh, K bar here. As you can see, basically, the same exact overall size as the legendary USMC K-Bar. That's a good thing, you know. This is recognized through the decades around the world as a great multi-purpose soldier's knife. Certainly as a weapon, but just for any cutting task of the soldier. All right, so I see where they're going with this design. I see where they're going. They want to make something like a K-Bar, but instead of... Uh, you know, the, hit, the hidden tang, they just want the full extended tang with the handle scales. All right, so kind of, kind of an overbuilt, you know, heavier overbuilt uh, version of a K-Bar. I got to say the K-Bar wins in terms of the steel. You know, high carbon is superior to a cheaper stainless. You know, there are expensive stainless, and, and there are better stainless, but this is, <laughs> this is not one of them. 
I like the tip designs on both knife knives. That'll take care of business. You can see this is a little bit wider than the K bar. All right, I see where they're going with this. Let's cut to the chase. Why the heck would you buy this when you can just buy a K bar? Well, this is a bit cheaper than the K bar, you know, depending if it's on sale or whatever where you find it. The lowest I found this for sale at is uh, $35. I don't know how much the cheapest K bar. The, the K bars hover around 50. All right, so 15 bucks less. All right, you, you pique my interest. You know, you're trying to make a budget version. Uh, honestly, I think if you're going to make a K bar competitor with a, a lesser steel, you need to go down in price even more. To me, this would be a great knife at $20, $25, I should say. And if this were $20, it would be an incredible steal because it's, it's definitely worth $20 to $25. $35, and then you're getting in territory where maybe you just save up a little more money and get a K bar. But then again, maybe you actually really want the full tang handle. There are good reasons to have the, the, the hidden tang in the K bar. It does go all the way to the pommel, all right? But it, it's basically less wide than the, uh, the blade itself. That makes the K bar more top heavy, so it actually gives you stronger chops. And that type of tang makes it lighter overall, which is important for soldiers. And also, uh, in cold weather, you're not contacting any, any bare metal. And also the rounded handle is just more comfortable usually than a, a boxy handle. So there are many reasons why the K-Bar actually does not have a tang like this. But if you're going for pure strength, well then yeah, obviously when you can see the tang all the way around, you know, it's overbuilt. As I said, this is an overbuilt version of a K-Bar. So what does it all mean? Oh, by the way, sorry if there's wind and <laughs> whatever other background conditions. But what does it all mean? It means I see where they're going with this and I do like it. I just think it should be a bit cheaper. You know, I think this should be maybe $25. If this were $25, I would not hesitate to recommend it as a great budget option. Um, at its current price, Basically, if you don't mind the steel, then sure, I mean, love the blade shape, love the full tang. Not too crazy about the steel, but then again, they are selling it as a weapon knife, so in that sense, who cares? But people might use this as also just a camp knife. It's, it's, it's damn heavy for a camp knife, I'll tell you. If you're going to carry something that's, you know, a, a pound, one pound, ten ounces, I mean, you could carry a lot bigger bigger blade if you want to go that heavy but you know maybe you want a mo you want one knife to do a whole bunch of things all right i could see that so yeah i'd give this uh i guess i would give it a solid b maybe uh, actually no a b plus just because i i like the tip design i give this a b plus so that's my uh stump top stab view of the smith and wesson homeland security they also have a tanto version but I don't know, I, I really like the clip point more than the Tanto. So there you go. This has been We All Juggle Knives. I'm out.